and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our new dye, Lovely Latte. It's one of our paper piecing style dyes similar to Garden Gnome and Delightful Daisy, so let's go ahead and check it out. This dye has a coffee cup base and then the coffee cup detail. It has some little latte art, a whipped cream base and whipped cream detail, and then two little rosy cheeks. We've die cut this cup out of some different colors and here we have it die cut out of black licorice cardstock. We're gonna take out all of the interior pieces and just work with the frame. Then we're also going to be working with a base that's cut out of black licorice cardstock too and we're gonna layer those two pieces together. We're gonna add drops of liquid glue to the back of the frame and then layer that onto the black base. Now there's lots of different colors that you can cut these frames out. The black is traditional because it's kind of like the black lines of a stamped image, but dark brown would be pretty and so would white. I just love that. Even a fun color would be cool too. And then we'll start to fill in our cup. So we're gonna create a white latte cup here. So we're gonna add in that main piece with the smiley face. And we're also going to fill in the handle and then the back of the cup there, the little rim of the cup two ways that you can fill the coffee cup. There's a plain way or the latte art way. And in this case, we're gonna do the plain way. So we just die cut our cup out of some dark brown cardstock, and then we're gonna lay that piece in there and that's gonna be our coffee. We're gonna do something really similar here with our whipped cream. We've got our black base and then the frame cut out of black licorice as well. And then we're gonna drop in those white pieces of cardstock to fill in our whipped cream, which looks so very cute. Now you'll notice I have some extra pieces that we're not gonna be using for this particular coffee cup, and I'm definitely gonna save those because the brown and white would make perfect frames for other styles of lattes. Now here you can see what it looks like when you layer the little whipped cream on top. It's so cute and so sweet. And then the set also has these little blush rosy cheeks that you can layer on or not depending on your design. Now here is that latte art version, and instead of dropping in the plain one that the cup frame cuts for you, we're gonna drop this one in instead. So we'll add some liquid glue to the back, and we can layer that right on the inside. Then we need to fill in the latte art, so we're gonna take out a piece, the same latte art piece cut out of white cardstock, and we're gonna layer those pieces inside, and I just love that little heart so much. So we're gonna drop the heart in there, and then we're gonna add some liquid glue because some of the pieces remained in the die cut, and that's awesome when that happens. So what we're gonna do is layer that whole die cut piece over top, and then you can just almost kind of like push the pieces through and they're gonna line up perfectly. And it's a really nice and easy way to add these tiny little details. Next, we'll drop in any of the remaining white pieces, and now our two styles of latte cups are all done. So what's cute about this is you can do more of a latte, you could just do a plain black coffee, you can do more of a hot chocolate feel, especially with that little whipped cream on top. So I love that there's so many different ways to mix and match these coffee cups. And we're gonna start off by creating a clean and simple card with this latte, and then we're gonna do a cool inked version. So first up, we're going to take our dies here, and we're gonna be die cutting them from some chocolate bar cardstock, which is a nice brown. We're gonna die cut the frame piece and the base piece in the chocolate bar and then we're gonna cut the frame piece in a vanilla malt and then we're gonna cut our latte piece in some white cardstock. And we're gonna die cut that twice because we're gonna do some cool inking in just a little bit. And then we're gonna die cut those little cheeks from some ballet slippers cardstock. We're gonna take out all of the interior pieces of the chocolate bar piece and we're gonna layer that right on top of the base. And you'll notice that I always like to keep the base the same color as the frame. It just makes it look nice and seamless. Then we're gonna layer in our pieces that come from the vanilla malt. So we're gonna have this nice kind of like vanilla colored mug that really is gonna feel kind of like a diner mug, right? And then we're gonna add a little drop of glue and add each of those rosy cheeks. Now I really love to color either the latte art or the plain coffee with markers because you can give it kind of that uneven look of actual coffee. So we're just gonna take two markers here and just kind of scribble across the die cut. Super easy, nothing complicated. Just scribble your two markers and make it look kind of uneven. That's what's gonna make it look super nice. Then we'll pop out all of those interior pieces and we're gonna cover the whole coffee area with liquid glue. We're gonna drop this piece that we colored in and then we're gonna work with that piece that's just cut out of white. In this one you can see all of the little die cuts remain inside which is awesome. So all you need to do is line it up and press through with a pokey tool and that's gonna perfectly line up your pieces. So when they all stay in there it works so well. And then here you can see that finished coffee cup. It's so cute and so fun. And now we're gonna work on the rest of this card. And we're gonna be taking out the new Sweater Weather Remix 6x6 pad. And we're gonna look through for the perfect papers for this card. And first we're going to use the school lined paper and we're gonna die cut that with the largest of the small stitch rectangles. This school lined paper is perfect for when you want a background but you want it to be really subtle. 
Then we're going to take the new giant thank you die and we're going to die cut that out of some of the turquoise paper there with that little subtle pattern and it's going to look so pretty. That little pattern just gives it a little extra something. And then for the base we're going to use the brown plaid and the brown plaid is perfect because it kind of invokes the color of the coffee in our latte cup. Then we're going to assemble this all together. So we're going to add some tape runner to a card base that's a standard size at five and a half by four and a quarter. Tape runner to the back of our giant thank you, which we're going to layer on that school line paper that we die cut with the stitched rectangle. And then we're going to start to work with our little coffee mug here. And of course, we're going to add some foam squares to the back of him so that he's really popped up off the card. But the first thing we need to do is stamp a bit of a sentiment. So we're going to have our thanks a latte stamp set and we're going to stamp you're the cream to my coffee, which is such a cute sentiment. And it's so fun to take some of these coffee themed stamp sets to help bring that into the card designs with these fun paper piecing dies. Then we're going to layer some foam squares on the latte and some foam squares on the back of our whole panel and then layer that on top of our brown plaid. And the card is all done. It's super cute, super easy to do, and it would really put a smile on someone's face. Next up, we're going to do a latte card, but it's going to be a shaker and we're going to do a lot of inking. So we're going to take out our lovely latte dies and we're going to be die cutting this from some white cardstock. Now to help keep all of our pieces together, we've gone ahead and placed this on a full stick post-it note. It's a really great way with these paper piecing dies to kind of keep everything organized. And here you'll see that I'm separating the frame because I want to keep that white, but I'm putting all the parts of the coffee cup. So the rim, the handle, and the main part of the cup on this little sticky note just to keep everything nice and straight. And we're going to take out some salvage patina, which is this really pretty turquoise, and we're going to put that on with a blender brush, just kind of building up the color. I like the idea of the color not being totally perfect on the mug and then we're going to add some peacock feathers to the outside edges to give a little bit of a gradient look and I think it just looks so beautiful. Now we're going to take that peacock feathers and we're going to smear it on to our craft mat here. We're going to add a little bit of water just with a spray bottle then we're going to pick that up with a paintbrush and splatter it onto the cup to add some detail. Next, we're going to work with the coffee cup base, and we're going to be adding some color to the coffee cup base with some antique linen. So we're going to be doing the latte piece just a little bit differently. Instead of feeding in those pieces and paper piecing it all together, we're going to let the color shine in from the bottom. So we're going to add just a little bit of light brown, and that's going to be the light brown to the dark brown in our latte art. And you'll see how that works when we layer the pieces together. Then we've got that white frame that we set aside in the beginning. We'll add some liquid glue to the back of that and just layer that right onto the base. Then we can start to fill in our turquoise coffee cup and I think it's so fun to have this pretty color. So we're going to start off with the rim and we're going to drop that inside and then we're going to start feeding all of our pieces in. And that's one of my most favorite parts of these paper piecing style dies is to drop the pieces in. It feels like a cool little puzzle and I always have fun doing it. We die cut the eyes and mouth out of some ground coffee cardstock. I wanted it to be dark but not all the way black and that ground coffee is a nice dark brown that looks really really pretty with this. And then now we're going to work with our latte piece. So the first thing we need to do is add some color because we want it to match the rest of our oxide inking that we've done. So we're going to add some brushed corduroy and some vintage photo just to kind of create an uneven look of coffee, almost like what we did with the Copic markers. And then once that's all done, we can go ahead and poke out all of those little pieces so that we don't have any of them filling those spots. We'll add some liquid glue to the back and then we can layer that into our coffee cup and you can see that that color that we ink blended onto the base is going to peek through filling in that latte art. So this is a different way to do it instead of dropping all of those tiny pieces in. Now we're going to take a white gel pen and just add details all around this coffee cup to give it kind of a cool cartoony feel. We did some details on the eyes around the cup and also filling in those little latte art sections that make it look like almost like there's a little coffee foam on there. I cut some of the little cheeks out of ballet slippers but they didn't quite match because everything was inked so I took some tattered rose ink and just inked it over top of it and that helped it kind of blend in better with my cute scene. And then we're going to add each of those little cheeks on with some liquid glue and of course we'll add some little white gel pen detail to the cheeks as well just so that all coordinates with the rest of our mug and now our little mug is all done and look how cute he is I just love him the little splatters add texture and all the inking just makes it look so pretty and it was so much fun to create
So this beautiful little coffee cup needs a beautiful background. So we are gonna be using the new Fall Leaves Backdrop Die, and we're gonna die cut that from some white cardstock. And throughout this week, we've been doing a lot of videos with this die, and we've used lots of different ways to color it in. And this time, we're going to be using some Copic markers to color it in. And this is a nice and quick and easy way to color in these leaves all individually that actually goes by pretty quickly. And so what I did was I picked out some different markers, reds, yellows, browns, and greens, and we're just gonna fill in these leaves. And I'm not trying to be perfect or anything with my coloring because they are fall leaves. So you want them to be a little imperfect. Each one of them is different and special, right? So now you'll see I've brought in a yellow to this just to add a little bit more of brightness on some of the tops so all the leaves don't look the same. And now we're gonna work our way into some leaves that are a little bit lighter. So instead of starting with the darkest red, I'm starting with my medium red and then working my way out to my yellows. Then I'll do some more that start with the lightest red and then go from yellows into even brighter. That way we have lots of different looks on this. Next, we're gonna work our way into some browns and yellows. And so I'm using some YRs that kind of look like browns and then some yellow colors to blend them out. And I've never ended up using the YR27, so that's why I pulled it away. And so you'll see, I'm just making little streaks and then blending them out so quick and easy and imperfect, but that's what makes it look so pretty. And then we're gonna repeat the same thing. So my darker marker, I just did some nice lines and then I blended it out with my green. And then I'm bringing in a little bit of yellow just to kind of make that green not stand out so much and have it blend in more with the rest of my other leaves. Then we're going to use that same YR24 as our brown for the little twigs and then we'll use the brightest red that we did for the berries and that's going to help tie all of that in and look how pretty this looks. Now I didn't have to worry about it being uneven on the edges because I am covering it up with my stitched rectangle frame. So I die cut that out of white cardstock and this frame is a perfect match for this fall leaves backdrop and we're going to layer that right on top and it makes it a nice and finished and I didn't have to do any complicated masking or anything and look how pretty pretty that's looking. Oh, I had so much fun making this and I just love how it looks. Such a cool design, Grace. This card is so awesome. Now that we have a beautiful cup and a beautiful frame, we need a beautiful background too. So we're gonna do some really cool ink blending. And this is a color combo I'd never tried before and it looks so cool and now I wanna do it forever. So it's gonna be festive berries and then we're gonna go into worn lipstick. And then after that, we're gonna do tattered rose, and then we're gonna do dried marigold. And you'll see that as the colors overlap, I'll go back and forth between the colors to make sure that there's a nice blend between all of them. But these all blended so beautifully, you didn't really have to work very hard. So we're gonna do that tattered rose color and then go back with the worn lipstick to blend it through, and then bring in the dried marigold. And that's what really helps finish out this pattern. You'll see that I brought the dried marigold really far into the center to give it this really nice blend and give everything together. Now here I'm spraying it with just some plain water and then picking up the water with a paper towel and you'll see how cool this looks. It kind of adds a fun glow to the back and it's going to be really cool with the whole shaker effect we're going for next. Then here I'm going to take out the frame and layer it on top and oh my gosh, look how pretty that is. It just turned out so nice. Oh, I, I wanna make this card again. It was just so much fun. All right, so I've got all my pieces now and we're gonna work on making a shaker and I haven't made a shaker in a long time and I forgot how fun these are. So what we're gonna do is take some eighth inch strong double-sided tape and we're gonna put that all along the frame. We'll peel up that liner paper and then take a piece of acetate that's been cut to five and a half by four and a quarter, the exact size of that backdrop and layer it in the background and that's going to be creating our our window. Now next up we're going to add some foam and these iCraft 3D foam strips are awesome for this because you don't even have to double them up because they're so tall. So what I'm going to do is take my scissors and trim them down into nice thin kind of eighth inch thin strips and we're going to add those all along the frame as well and so that frame is going to cover up the foam and you're never going to see it. And next, we're gonna do my favorite trick for shakers, which is what helps them work really, really well. And that's to use one of those anti-static powder tools. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run that powder tool all along the inside of the foam, removing any excess stickiness that might be there. You can also use some baby powder or cornstarch with a paintbrush and it'll do the same thing. So the powder is just gonna to stick to any excess adhesive and just take away any of that tackiness. So once we've done this all the way around, we're ready to create the shaker. And I'm gonna take out some clear, iridescent sequins. I thought they looked really just magical and pretty and we're going to dump a bunch of them in the center of this card. Then once we have all of our sequins ready we can peel up the liner paper on the foam and layer our whole frame on top creating our shaker. 
Now it's time to work on the sentiment and we're gonna be taking out the scripty autumn sentiments and using that with some walnut ink. So we're gonna use the word hello and also the word autumn and we're gonna die cut the autumn with the coordinating dies that are included for that set. And then for the hello, we're just gonna stamp it and cut it out on a little piece of white cardstock. So we've added some tape runner to the back of that beautiful mug and we're gonna tuck him into those fall leaves. So it looks like he's kind of surrounded by the fall leaves. And then we can add our die cut word autumn on top and then we're gonna add that tiny little hello that we've just cut out in a little rectangle shape right on top of that. And then our next step is to add this to a card base. So here we have a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. We're gonna add some tape runner to it and then we can layer this whole shaker piece right on top. And now, of course, we're going to shake the card because that's the best part is seeing this whole thing in action. You can just see how cute this is. I love seeing those sequins just move around. It feels just magical because they pick up all of those reds and yellows from all the inking and coloring that we did. And I had so much fun creating this card. It's so much fun to ink all of those little pieces for the latte mug. And then next up, Shari is going to show us how to take this latte into the holidays because he's great for fall, but he's also great for Christmas, too. I'm going to use the new Lovely Latte Cup to make a Christmas card. And I'm starting out using the new Peppermint Stripes Backdrop Die to cut a piece of mermaid cardstock. I've put some liquid glue all over the back of those stripes and I'm going to layer that onto a peacock card base. So we're gonna get those tone on tone teal stripes to create the background for my card and my little coffee cup to sit on. Actually, I am making some hot chocolate since this is a holiday card rather than coffee. And to create my little cup, I am taking a piece of that double-sided adhesive sheet, putting it on a piece of black cardstock, and I'm going to cut the base for my coffee cup out of that. So this is the solid piece, and it's gonna have adhesive all over it. Once I peel off that backing paper and you can see I've cut out all my other pieces to create my little cup. So I've got the frame for the image that's also cut out of black. And now that I've peeled off that backer paper and I have adhesive all over the solid piece, I can just put that frame right on there. And it's really easy to do with that adhesive sheet. Now I wanted to create a glittery red holiday coffee cup, so I cut the cup from some of the red sparkle cardstock from the holiday sparkle pack. And then of course I have some ground coffee and that is going to be my hot chocolate inside my cup. And then for the back piece, I decided to cut that out of chili pepper so that I didn't have glitter on the inside of the cup. So just a slight difference in the color there. And then I decided to put the little face in using white. I'm actually going to end up covering up the eyes with some googly eyes because I just thought that would be super fun. And it's going to go really well with the sentiment I decided to use on this card that says Be Jolly. I also wanted to add some little festive gingerbread cookies to my card. So I'm using the O Snap mini set. And I'm just stamping this little guy in walnut ink on some paper bag cardstock. So I'm not even gonna need to color in the image. I'm gonna use that colored cardstock as my gingerbread color. I'm just going to use the coordinating die to cut them out. And then I'm using a white gel pen just to add some little white accents to their buttons. For the whipped cream that goes on top of my hot chocolate, I've cut the base piece out of white. I didn't use the adhesive sheet this time, I forgot. So I'm just putting adhesive all over that base piece. I'm using the outline also in white, but the little pieces inside so that there's some contrast, those are cut from some vanilla malt cardstock. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of liquid glue to put my whipped cream on top of my hot chocolate. So now I'm going to work on the sentiment. I'm using the Be Jolly from the Winter Big Scripty Words stamp set. And I'm going to white emboss this on a piece of rainforest cardstock. So that really dark teal. It's going to go with the teal colors for my background and those stripes. But it's going to stand out really nicely. So I've stamped that in some clear embossing ink. Added some white embossing powder. And then I'm just heating that up with my heat tool to melt that embossing powder and get that really pretty white sentiment. 
This has some coordinating dies and I'll use that to cut out the sentiment. And then I also have a wide banner here cut from some guava card stock. And this is where my sentiment's going to go. So I'm just adhering this down towards the bottom of my card. And you can see I've got my sentiment just sitting there as some placement. I'm going to add some glue to the back of my cup of hot chocolate with that little gingerbread guy peeking out from behind. And then I can add my sentiment using some liquid glue as well. And I'm adding this second because it's going to overlap my cup just a little bit there in the center. I like how the scripty sentiment kind of goes off the edges of the banner. I think that's really fun. And then I'm just adding my last two little gingerbread guys with some foam squares so they have a little bit of dimension. And they're just going to go on each side of my hot chocolate. And then here is my finished card with that sparkly holiday cup and those fun googly eyes. And I just think it is so much fun. I just love all that glitter, Shari. This card is so cute. And next up, we have some adorable cards by the design team. And first up, this card by Audrey is so sweet and cute. And I love that she sews that this coffee cup is great for year round, not necessarily just fall and Christmas. Here is the beautiful card by Grace that inspired me to make mine today. Oh, I love it so much. It's so stunning. Next up, we have a super cute card by Elise, and she's done one of her fun custom sentiments that I just adore. This cup is such a cute match for our Finley's ABCs. Yanea created a holiday card by combining the lovely latte with our brand new giant Let It Snow die. This card is so cute and fun, and I just adore it. Here, Mindy created a cute custom sentiment as well, and our little cats are now creating lattes instead of spells. Super cute way to use them, and just an adorable card. Here, I love how Tiffany stacked all the cups together and cut them out of pattern paper. It's so fun and so adorable. And then Kara created two beautiful cards with this set, this super cute gratitude, which I love the pattern paper on the mug. And then next up, she created a flippy flappy card, which is such a fun way to use this cup because she has this beautiful fall design using our new fall leaf background stencils and our new gold stencil paste. And as you pull the tab, you get the fun surprise of a coffee themed gift card, which is such a cute way to use this and combine it with the flippy flappy. So we can't wait to see what you guys create with Lovely Latte, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.